Hello and welcome back. This is the Mini Town Bicycle Series video number 11. In the last video, we cut up some chainstay caps and then welded those little guys on. In this video, we are doing all things seat stays, cutting and miters and welding. Cause that's what we do here. We weld stuff. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I need to do is put the uh, chain stays on here. Uh, so I got to get these tacked on. Um, I'm going to show you guys a little adjustment I would like to make first though. So if I take the seat stay and then sit it onto the dropout, um, I'm not a big fan of this shape here. So the dropout kind of scoops in and then the seat stay goes straight up. What I'd like it to do is just be like a straight line going straight up. Uh, so I'm going to need to make an adjustment to these dropouts. I've determined I want the seat stays a little bit longer uh, because what I did is I've I've shaved off a bit of the dropout right here so that means it's gonna sit a little bit lower and I also would like the sides flush with uh, the edges of the dropout so that means I'm going to notch it as well This is that little block I just cut out. And right here is the halfway mark for where the bend begins.
I got my uh, seat stays all set up in the fixture. I'm not gonna go over how I did all this because I did it in another video. I just know that it's a huge pain in the ass because it's got these bars and uh, also these tubes stand off of the the bottom here. That's why this business is in here because I need to, to compensate because these tubes are bent and I gotta make sure they're on a flat plane. And so I just put a piece of plate in here and kept adding paper until it was up about the right height. Oh, hope I can get this out of here. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I can take this out of here now. The other thing too is you notice I have a, I have my drawing underneath and I was using that to line everything up. Um, but if you've got like a flat surface and if these bars are laying on a flat surface, I, will, I would normally want to stick my drawing right there and then have the bars sitting right on the drawing and it makes that whole setup way easier. Um, anyway, this will do for now and we are ready to make this uh, the C-tube miter cut. Okay, we're uh, pretty close. Um, once I get the bottoms notched, it'll kind of uh, drop it down like that. It should all fit up nicely once I get the dropouts slotted. I'm gonna come in here and reference where the dropout will slot, uh, just by eye, so that when I get this fixtured into the mini mill, uh, I know that I'm at, I'm at the right angle and roughly in the right place. It's really easy to mess this up because it's such a weird thing to wrap your mind around. Now obviously I'm gonna measure and get this right but this is just so I know I'm coming in at the right angle. Also marking the top side. Alright so I'm just about set up here. Uh, this is for uh, three-quarter. You might remember these. I was using these for reference uh, but this is a uh, 5 8 so I need to... I was gonna just kinda like wing it and try to stick something on here um, I don't have anything maybe just mark it but you know I want to do this right and uh, I usually use one of these so I'm gonna go ahead and make a uh, 5 8 one I'm gonna put the collars on here now and uh, the reason I made a collar is there's a bend here and if it was the normal size block it would not fit properly in there so this is still not the greatest fit it's still a little um, wide for this bend but I think it's good enough to get us a little indexing down in here So for the depth of cut, on one side is 6 millimeters and on the other side is 12 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is cut both sides at 6 first. So again, I came down 1 millimeter because the saw is 4 millimeters and the slot needs to be 5. Okay, so now on this side, I need this to come in uh, 12 millimeters. On the top sides, I got a little bit of a gap and it should be pretty easy to fill. So now I just need to cut tapers and caps.
The first tack I'm going to lay is right down in this corner here and that actually pulls the, uh, if it does any pulling, it'll pull the seat stay kind of down rather than if I put one here, it would kind of pull it up and possibly create a gap right here. Now I'm gonna attack right down in here. And uh, I've got the tape on here because I'm uh, just using it to hold it slightly up a bit. There's a little bit of a wiggle in there, so it's just kind of holding it in place. All right, so for whatever reason, the uh, argon wasn't covering very well and causing those sparks. And then on this one, I you can see I touched down just then. Uh, that's never a good thing, uh, but it still ended up tacking. I stopped to show you guys, uh, I've got a tiny little burnout right here. Um, I had my filler there and I uh, threw my tack down and it kind of burned out a little. The reason is there was a little bit of a gap um, from here to the seat tube. Um, what I should have done is used 045 knowing, having known that, but uh, I wasn't thinking. I considered filling it in again and throwing another tack, but this tack is still holding on there. I'm going to let this be and take care of this on my weld pass. I've got the seat stays tacked to the seat tube. And I've also, down on the other end, I've got my uh, dropouts tacked. Uh, this guy right here was a bit of a problem. It, uh, there was a really big gap here because when I mitered this, I over-slotted it and there was some space here. So I took that opportunity uh, in the t this tacking phase or whatever to, uh, to kind of fill that in. So I don't have to worry about that later. And uh, here's the other side. This was uh, not as much of a problem because I learned from the other side and I didn't slot it as much on this side. All right, here are my caps. These are the outside and these are for the inside. And the inside are really small, so I need to be really careful. This one I missed really badly, but uh, oh well, what can you do? And here's the other side. This came out a little better. And so now we're ready to start welding this whole thing together. I'm going to start with the hardest weld, which is the seat tube and the seat stays. So I'm going to start right around here and then work my way down and get as far down into here. All right, I changed my mind after staring at this for a while. Uh, I decided to actually uh, come in right here, start right in here somewhere, and then draw my weld out. It's always easier to like, let's say this is your tungsten angle, to kind of point it down as far away as like, where you can still kind of see what's going on, and then kind of pull it in toward you and weld that way, rather than going like, you know trying to go like down in this direction because then I would be looking down like this while I'm pulling it this way and that's no good because it's too hard to get your helmet uh, your helmet gets in the way and hits the seat stays so you're gonna want to kind of look in and then come out and around Okay, here's where I'm at so far. I started down in here and I worked my way up and did the same on the other side. I didn't quite get as far up as the other side when I was coming around. Um, so yeah, I'll continue that 
later on, but the next step here is I'm going to try to get down in here and now bring it around the bottom. I've got the hard part done and now I'm going to move on to the dropouts. Okay guys, that is a wrap. Uh, we have, what's next? We have the seat stay bridge, the chain stay bridge. Uh, we gotta get the fenders on there, so that's what the bridges are for. Um, what else? Uh, all the little doodads. The uh, next video may be delayed a bit, cause uh, I've got some personal things going on at home, uh, possibly moving the, possibly moving. So yeah, hang in there. I will be back after the dust settles. Uh, just hang in there and um, hopefully I'll be back soon. Alright, thanks for watching. See you guys later, later, later. Bye.